my name is Justin Love. Um, and I am a Killer user. And this should not matter. And it's AMP's mission to make it not matter. Um, we're going to talk about this morning about freedom. We want to be free from being stuck on one version control system or only knowing how to easily use one version control system. AMP wants to be a familiar, customizable interface to every version control system. I'm going to describe what AMP is, why AMP matters, what AMP will do for you, how to use it, and how you can help. <coughs> so my own, you know, sort of version control journey. When I went to college, uh, there was no concept of version control. We kind of, you know, did our little projects. Did anybody actually get introduced to version control in school or education? Okay, th there's one. That, that's that's some, that two. That's that, that's that's some progress. Uh, when I went off and actually got a job, then I was introduced to Vir Visual Source Safe. <laughs> Any Visual Source Safe past, hopefully, users out there? Yep. So it was a small company. Um, so it was pretty much, you know, lock the entire project, check in once a day, and hey, it's a backup, right? Um, so I eventually uh, started reading about other systems and things, and uh, I moved that company over to Subversion to get things going a little bit better. I'd heard about distributed version control at this point, but it was a conservative company, small teams. I stuck with a centralized system and a GUI to kind of help everybody through that transition. But over time, I was starting to kind of, you know, wake up from just, you know, being just an employee and said, okay, I now I need something for my own projects. So, okay, now I want to investigate distributed version control. I'm not under the same constraints anymore. Now, I, I, I narrowed my field down to uh, Git and Mercurial at that time. And, in, and then keep in mind, this was 2007, I was making this choice. Some things have changed since then. Uh, everything I read said that Git had this really arcane kind of command set, and, whereas Mercurial was a lot cleaner. Uh, using Subversion, I also gotten used to the um, Subversion online book, which was a very useful int introductory reference, and there was a version of that for Mercurial, which later became an actual printed book. Uh, I was not aware of anything that kind of had that same t level of tutorial quality for Git then. Uh, the company I was working for also, we had primarily Windows machines. I didn't want to cut anybody off. Uh, Git's Windows story was still kind of shaky at that point. You could kind of sort of get it to work under Sigwin, but it still wasn't quite all there yet. So at that time, in 2007, I made my choice on Mercurial and eventually moved that company over to that. That was 2007. In 2008, GitHub came along and you know, Ruby and a lot of other communities kind of went over that way. Since then, I've certainly used Git, you know, uh, branching, rebasing, all that fun stuff. Although a lot of my repositories are still in Mercurial. So that is where I'm coming from if anyone wants to try and evaluate any biases I may have. There's my reminder. All right, so what is AMP? Well, AMP is a familiar, customizable interface to every version control repository, or it's trying to be. Um, it wants to give you the, your, kind, your familiar interface to your version control through a common API to every repository that you might want to access without having to learn its new conventions and things. Now, while its goal is to be an interface to every version control repository, what you'll get if you install it right now is full Mercurial support, and I'll explain why it's that instead of Git as we move along here. But that's where I started from. So it also wants to be familiar and customizable. So it has a flexible command system with commands that are written in Ruby so you have the complete power of a general purpose language available to write custom commands and extensions and things. AMP was written by Michael Edgar and Ari Brown operating under Kabarnica, and uh, Michael actually rearranged his schedule to come down here to RubyCon today, so I'm uh, certainly glad to be meeting up with him. So the name AMP uh, is a little bit of a play on rails. Um, which apparently is a slang term for cocaine, which DHS was even talking about earlier today, uh, which puts a whole new spin on Ruby on Rails. Um, so, yeah. So, owing to some features of, uh, you know, local nearby towns, they decided to make AMP a play on meth, you know, even though it's, you know, obviously, it's not an obviously drug-related thing, but 
that's it's a short term that kind of followed along from that uh, precedent set by Rails there. So they had the problem of who want to make this you know this general purpose version control system, and you know how do you do that? How would you got how would you make a version control system? I mean seriously, you know where would you start? Anybody? You don't know where you'd start. Oh, yep, yep. Read the other ones. So, when they started this project, they said, okay, we're going to start with the Mercurial implementation. You know, essentially clone that into Ruby and then we'll refactor and whatnot from there. This gave them an existing implementation in a dynamic language. It wasn't as big a leap as going from something that was written in C or some other language. So, so it, could, it could translate more or less over without as much uh, conceptual um, conflict or dissonance there. One of the things that happened because of that is that since Mercurial was GPL, AMP as a derived implementation of that necessarily became GPL, even though they might have preferred a more open license like uh, the Ruby license or MIT or something like that. So they actually essentially, essentially completed that conversion. They got you know, complete implementation of the Mercurial API uh, as something we can start testing and playing around with and building upon for the other systems. So what I've just described is AMP 053, which was, which was done under the title of John Locke. And I'll be using that name to refer to that version of AMP as we go through that, this presentation. And, and you know, that sort of icon will signify I'm talking about what you'll gem install today. Okay. I heard about AMP a while ago, and I didn't really get into it right away just because of timing and things. Um, but I finally had time to do that, so I went and I found the AMP web page, said, okay, there's, there's lots of information here. I've got examples, I've got a little bit of explanation of how things work. I've got pointers to the code repository. Things have been recently updated, so the project's definitely still alive. Uh, we're starting to see the Git support coming in, so this is a good thing. Uh, I know that'll help the Ruby adoption a lot. <coughs> uh, but as time went on, I, went, I got back into it. Uh, uh, and so I went, I went in, um, found some tests that, that needed some help, some things that weren't working, made some patches, things were all looking good. So I went ahead and threw off my second proposal to RubyConf. And then things got a little bit more interesting. As time went on, I checked back, did some more patches and things. Uh, their the main repository still hadn't been updated. Uh, then the AMP web page disappeared. Um, and as you can probably guess by the fact that I'm here now, the Proposal got accepted, and it's like, well, that's interesting. Uh, I hope I'm not doing a funeral speech. Um, and no, the repository still hadn't been, not been updated. Um, so I said, okay. I remember there was this out-of-date mirror on GitHub, so maybe they actually switched over to there. And well, no, there were no updates there either, but uh, hey, what's this AMP Redux thing? So, so there's something going on here. So this is where I finally emailed uh, Mike and Ari and said, you know, hey, what's going on? And in fact, they had been uh, doing some internships and other distractions. They had a cheap web host, so that, that was something that got been taken care of. <clears throat> and one of the things I found out is that, yes, they had started to do the Git implementation, and then things got a little bit more interesting. It turned out to be a little bit trickier than they at first expected. And this isn't really all that surprising, considering that they started with a, essentially a clone of the Mercurial source. Um, Git does not have as close of an overlap with that set of you know, concepts. And in particular, what this started to point out is that Mercurial was very tied in with its concept of what files are stored where and how they are stored. It didn't present quite the, the higher level interface to version control that they wanted to present in order to easily cover everything. So taking this together with the licensing issues, they said, okay, it's kind of time to start this thing over. Uh, we've learned a lot from it. Um, and now taking together some other, you know, the, what they learned from doing John Locke together with other experience, uh, it's time to take that and, you know, taking a lot of that code, but kind of restructuring it into a new system. And this is part of the mission of AMP, to learn how to build large Ruby systems, and, oh, and as well as learning how to build version control systems. So maybe it'll take a few iterations. As much as it, what might have been nice to plan for this, at least it's nice to have that milestone out of the way. <coughs> so this brings us to AMP Redux. And lest you think I'm trying to mislead you by talking about two versions of AMP, I will be attempting to clearly identify 
uh, John Locke, which you can install today from AMP Redux, which is coming along nicely, but is still kind of in a period of major reorganizing right now. So as I said, Mike and Ari were off doing internships and things. They're learning a lot about software engineering and pulling that into how the new design of AMP they're separating, the, they're making a better separation of interface from implementation, so we don't have that same sort of tied into Mercurial or what have you. There's a higher level interface, and then below that you'll have the parts that deal with the messy bits. AMP Redux will be a more modular system. The primary modules at this point are AMP Front, which is a sort of a general command line shell that will be a plug-in host for the rest of it. AMP Core will turn it into a version control system and have these sort of general support libraries and things. And then you'll have all of the repository formats and eventually command sets for that. So AMP is trying to be a familiar, customizable interface to every version control repository. Here's my reminder again. Excuse me. All right. So why does AMP matter? Well, I imagine that most of you, thanks to GitHub, are using Git. Git is written in C. Git's archival material is written in Ruby's archival Python, as is Bazaar. There's a system called Darks, written as perhaps slightly more palatable Haskell. Uh, there's Monotone, one of the original distributed systems in C++. The big gorilla subversion is written in C. There's a distributed version of that called SVK that's written in Perl. And if you add all these up, there's something missing here. In fact, if you go to, for instance, Wikipedia's comparison of revision control software and do a search for Ruby, you're not going to find a whole lot. Apparently, nobody thinks that Ruby is a viable system for a mission control piece of software like a version control system. And one of AMP's missions is to prove that it is viable for large scale applications. So AMP is trying to become a familiar, customizable interface to every version control repository. And despite its goals, someone will inevitably ask, do we really need another version control system? I mean, really? Well, at times, I'm sure people have asked, do we really need another implementation of Ruby? I mean, come on, we've got MRI, isn't that good enough? And yet, some people said we want one in Java. Some people said they wanted one in Smalltalk, but those guys are next door. Uh, some people said, we think that writing things in Ruby is a really nice way to get into our software systems and make them easily modifiable and understandable. I suppose I should thank the uh, RubyConf moderators for not putting the opposite of RubyConf, or uh, Rubinius. Um, Ru Ruby also made its fame through Rails, and yet that wasn't good enough. We said, well, we'd kind of like an uh, interface through Sinatra, or maybe we're going to do Merb, which ultimately went back and informed Rails 3. And last night, I heard about this thing called Fog, because apparently, some people like being able to access more than one cloud host. I mean, but, I mean isn't one good enough? But 700 people think this is an interesting project. It's interesting. So AMP wants to be a familiar, customizable interface to every version control repository. I talked about how my journey went from visual source to subversion to Mercurial, and I've used some Git. Uh, your journey may look a little bit different. How many people here have only used one version control system? Okay. Two? Okay. Three? More than three? Yep. The point here is these things change over time. There will be a next thing. And I believe that having a common API that will let you kind of access, every, have the similar interface to all of these different, system, different systems will put you in a better position to adapt when that next thing comes. And if you're still not convinced, all I can say is thank you. So how will AMP help you? Its aim is to be a familiar, customizable interface to every version control repository. You can use it now to access Mercurial repos and eventually other things without necessarily having to install Python. 
you get a, both a, the AMP command that works essentially like the HG command, and you also get a library you can include into your Ruby code in order to programmatically access Mercurial repositories, and as, as AMP matures and rebuilds AMP Redux, eventually other repositories. At a more abstract level, what we have right now are version control systems that act like silos. You're pretty much talking from, the, from its command set to its repository. You'll usually get one-way imports, but this has to be redone for every new version control system to every other version control system that's already out there. You occasionally get two-way interaction like HTGit or Git SVN. The problem is this kind of has to be done for every pair. It's an N squared problem, which means this is why you don't see a lot of these things because it'd be a pain in the butt to generate every possible combination. AMP is trying to turn this into an N plus N problem where you define your repositories and then you have your workflows or your ways of interfacing with those and these become separate problems. One of the nice things that, for instance, Active Record did is it made so all, or at least all, SQL type databases look more or less the same to your code. You don't have to worry about all the little differences. Uh, Fog is doing something uh, similar. It's giving you a common Ruby interface to all of the different cloud hosting providers so you can just say provision something and not worry about the details. AMP wants to give you the same thing for version control. It lets you take, you know, if you're familiar with Git, use your Git commands and it will let you talk to any database that's out there or repository. Um, and you can say that, okay, I'm, ha I'm happy with Git and that for your own projects, that's great. But what if you want to contribute to Firefox? That's a Mercurial repository. The same thing for Adium, the same thing for Vim. Um, Inkscape is in Subversion. That's, an that's another system you might have to learn or in your own system, you've got your, you've got your comfortable tools, you've got your custom commands, extensions, maybe you've got a, a history visualizer. If you move to a different repository, you've got to go find all those tools again. So one of AMP, part of AMP's mission is to let you customize how you interact with all these repositories. Use your command set, be that Git or a customized version of that or a completely customized workflow eventually. On the other side, if you have a project that's in a Git repository, other people, no matter what their experience with version control systems is, what their, their workflow is, they can contribute to that with having the added barrier of learning a new command set or repository format. This also opens up doing kind of a mix and match. Choose the command set you like and the repository format you want based on performance or uh, uh, size or whatever else you want to optimize for. So it wants to give you your familiar customizable interface to every repository format. <coughs> Another thing that uh, is interesting, interesting is that first we had Rails 3. It's a highly modular system uh, that, uh, and Going from Rails 2 to Rails 3 and throughout all of its history, they've allowed you to get into more switching out your ORM, your templating engine, all of these different pieces. AMP is also trying to get that kind of modular system where you can exchange things out. So it actually makes it, opens it up to easily exchanging things. So if you want to experiment with a new kind of workflow that doesn't exist, you don't have to create a repository format. You can swap out just that one piece. Uh, you know, back in the day, they had to rewrite. They had to write Merv essentially because they couldn't change out pieces of Rails one at a time. Um, now with Rails three, you can change out those pieces. And so we, we have common API. We can start switching things out like that. So you can you can you can change workflows. You can experiment with new repositories that may be optimized for some new feature or um, frequency of updating or something without having to go create a command line system. It also wants to make extensions that, are, that will work with anything, essentially. So every version control repository has these extensions, and a lot of times they'll get the same extension re-implemented. So every version control system has to re-implement all these extensions. Every extension has to be re-implemented for every version control system that somebody wants to use it for. AMP gives you a common API so you can rewrite these things one more time, and then you're done. They work for everything. All right. All right, so how do you use AMP? Well, for John Locke, which accesses Mercurial repositories, you can just gem install it now and you know, use it with the command line, just like you would do with HT or require AMP and use it in your code. Another, one of the 
missions of AMP is to make highly customizable commands. Um, you know, as I said, it's a familiar customizable interface to every version control repository. So whereas most version control you know, interfaces will give you like, key value pairs for default options and things, AMP gives you an AMP file, which is a Ruby code. So you have the full power of Ruby at your disposable to create custom commands and you know, tweak settings and things. This is done through a system of open commands that are, are, are going to try and work like Ruby's classes. So that they are open. Um, so the same syntax used to create a command is what you use to open it uh, and edit it. All right. Now things get fun. Yeah, uh, moved on. There we go. All right, welcome. Pretty good. All right. Yep. Over just a little bit. All right. So I've got my uh, AMP file in a Mercury repository currently. So I am going to come on. And you always get nervous on your own stage, so hopefully I won't get too many typos here. So I'm gonna open up my log command. Actually, I suppose I should do uh, first all the fun things you forget when you're on stage. So right now, if I do amp log, um, <coughs> I get a whole bunch of stuff. I usually like a shorter command. So I'm gonna change the default of the limit option to something else. <coughs> so I only get three, and of course I can still use my options to override that just like normal. So that's a very basic, this is still the kind of the key value thing like you can do with anything. But the nice thing about this is that these commands are Ruby. So I happen to be in the, uh, well actually it's like a, sort of my own version of uh, John Locke Edge. So I am going to actually search for the AMP command. So there's mine. There is the actual AMP command for log. It is, it is written in pure Ruby, the same style you would use to create your custom commands. So if you want to see how something works, you just go look it up and see how it works, copy it. So real quick here. We got our opening command log, just like uh, I did for modifying it. It's assigned to a workflow. This is so you could easily uh, switch between the git workflow, HD workflow, subversion workflow, et cetera. Um, I should warn you that, there were, that the, this is currently being put on the back burner for AMP Redux, just to kind of focus on getting your repository stuff working. But we'll have flexible commands, so this will be pretty easy to put back. Uh, we get a description. This is what goes into the AMP help, so that you uh, get automatic help. And along with that, oops, you get all of your options. So these are just uh, options. These are declared with the Trollop library that's been included into AMP. Uh, you might be familiar with that from some, pre from, from other projects that use it. Um, this also has descriptions uh, which get put into the help. So, yep. So if we do, uh, there we go again, butterfingering things. So all of this essentially gets you automatic help. So when you're at the command line, you just say amp help and you'll get uh, an up-to-date help pulled directly from these option commands and description and things. So your custom commands will essentially get help for free once you declare your options. Uh, let's see, okay. Then you get a block that defines how this thing runs. Stop it. Yeah. All right. So you got your block. You get a bit here that this is essentially, you know, this is almost boilerplate, just pulling out your options, getting them into convenient variables. Uh, we do a little bit more uh, tweaking our values and customizing things, uh, filling in defaults, stuff like that. And from there, I mean, this is just ordinary Ruby iteration. Going over our repository, we've got our uh, repository object, just indexed by the revision you want. So this is just you know plain old Ruby code to pull this out. 
Then we've got a helper method that's built into AMP here. This is essentially uh, taking all our change sets and running them through an ERB template. So if you've used Rails and things, you probably already know how to use this. So that is the log command. And what I'm going to do, if I remember how to do this right, is I'm gonna grab that, and I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna make a custom command. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna use this in my template, because I've got all that code there, iterating over revisions, that's just what we need. Now I had a situation a, a, a while ago where somebody asked me to uh, give a quote on something where I had done something similar recently, but I hadn't really been taking time for it. So I wanted a command to give me a quick summary of how long I spent doing that. So I'm gonna have a custom command. Uh, I'm not really gonna send it to a workflow. It's pretty much for everything. It's going to have a description, uh, estimate time spent. Uh, I don't need that option. I want to limit on it. I don't need that, don't need that. Uh, I'm gonna kinda need that stuff. I'm gonna do my iteration a little bit different. All right, so there's our basics. I wanna use some different words here because this is originally doing a down to count. So I don't really like that, that version of, uh, so my, st so I want, instead of start, I want to say that's my last revision. And instead of stop, I want to say that's my first. All right. <coughs> So anyway, that's just, that's just some cleanup. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Because if I do, let's see, amp help commands, that's kind of a big output. It's already in, if you do amp's list of commands, just doing that, you know, actually just the you know, command billing puts it in the amp's list of commands. If I do amp help billing, I've already got the basic description and all of the options available to me just for declaring that. So now, one of the things I pulled in, essentially built into AMP because it's a version control system, is the repository object. So there, I've already got a Ruby object I can use to manipulate this with. Now what I'm particularly interested in is the particular set of change sets. And well, that's a lot of them. I, I should probably put a uh, limit on that. Uh, let's uh, work with 10. That's a little bit more manageable. And that is the option parsing, essentially giving me those two fields to put on there. Now what I actually want to, now what I actually want in this case is not change sets, but dates. So, let's see, I don't want to do this. I want to map that over change sets. And I want, it, not change, change set, not change sets. All right, I want the, say, date. And here we went into one of the things it inherited from Mercurial, which I'm, I don't know what the plan on this is for AMP Redux. I would think hopefully cleaning this up a little bit. So uh, Redux, uh, or Mercurial rather, stored its dates as a timestamp and a time zone, which is not necessarily the most convenient thing you want. Um, for the sake of speed here, I'm going to cheat and say I've already looked up that what in fact we want here is what John Locke called easy date which actually gives you something, a well, it's not easy, easy to see there. If we change that to, see that a little bit easier? And these are in fact, uh, yep. uh, time objects, so we can subtract them and do all that fun stuff with them. So, that is our dates. Now what we actually want here is a difference between two dates. So I'm gonna use a fun little yep, Ruby method to give me pairs of things from this array. And so now I'm going to be taking pairs of things. So we've got our before and our after. And it's gonna be easier to rewrite that. So what we have is, you're gonna want after dot easy date minus before dot easy date. 
So that gives me a bunch of time differences, although there's some pretty big numbers in there. So I think what, so, so what we actually got here is seconds. Um, let's see, and actually, yeah, that'll work. So what in fact we want here is hours. And no, that's not built in, I'm going to define it. So we're just gonna take our seconds, uh, we're gonna turn that to minutes and then uh, into, well, seconds to minutes and then to hours. So that's a little bit more reasonable, although it's uh, kind of ugly with all those decimal points on there. So I'm gonna want to format this a little bit nicer. All right, so that's, that's a little bit easier to see. But uh, I'm not given to uh, huge coding marathons, so I don't think I was working on this for 71 hours. Um, I was probably doing sleeping or something during that time. So this is where we actually get into a little bit of heuristics. What, in fact, what we want here is billable hours. So I'm gonna go up here, and I'm gonna define a quick helper. And I was gonna say, eh, if hours is greater than one, I'm just gonna call it 0 0.25, else I'm gonna say it was the whole thing. So now we've got some more reasonable times to work with. And at this point, we can actually start uh, thinking about summing this up a little bit. So I'm gonna grab the list of times for easy reference now. Uh, all right. And actually, I kind of want to want this to be my hours, not uh, strings. So <coughs> there's my array of raw times. So I, now we just want to take, uh, actually, what I learned yesterday is we should be using reduce for this. Uh, we want to reduce, you know, this isn't the fastest way. So there's my time and Final touch is going to be make that puts and format. So that is a quick and dirty, you know, usable command in, I know, it was probably what, 10 minutes, even though I kind of knew what I was doing, I had to save myself some research. I just, I just looked, at, I looked up the AMP source, found something that was similar to what I wanted, and then started modifying it from there. All right, so I believe that is all of that simple. Oops, I actually wanted to, uh, uh, skip, some, skip, skip, my, skip, skip my slides now. All right. So, <coughs> AMP is a familiar and completely customizable in Ruby interface to every version control system. Well, at least it's trying to be. We're all, only got Mercurial now. All right. So, how can you help out AMP? Well, one of the goals of AMP is to be an example of good documentation and hopefully generally good Ruby, Ruby project. I was actually very impressed with the amount of effort that Mike and Ari had put into setting up their project so it would be easy to understand what's going on and how to get into it. They developed a manifesto, which actually set up the explicit goals for the project, which I've uh, been quoting throughout this presentation. There's also a style guide in a uh, very Old Testament style, laying out what they expect to be in their project. And a to-do list so that new contributors have a lot of places where they can say, okay, here's where I can jump in. You know, at a couple different levels of complexity and uh, scope. So you have something to jump into. Now, as I said, they're starting, they're kind of, refactoring re into AMP Redux right now. And it's gonna be a modular system. Um, the first and probably most advanced, or you know, furthest advanced part is uh, AMP Front. It's actually pretty far along now. Uh, that handles the command set, which includes all the option parsing, which do a trollop, which is also kind of giving, that, that's, we're actually uh, feeding off that for some, some of the help, built-in help features. <laughs> trollop. Uh, one of the interesting things that's going on here is that uh, whereas in 
amp um, John Locke, uh, commands were instances of a command class. Uh, in AMP Redux, the commands are actually classes. So the plan is this will hopefully allow us to take, to take advantage of uh, Ruby's sort of class uh, modularity mix-ins and things in order to make it easy to uh, customize our commands. Uh, AMP Front is also a plugin host. So essentially, this, this, is the, this is the plugin container, and then all of the rest of the rest of AMP is plugins for that container. Um, first and most important to those is AMP Core. This is what actually turns AMP into a version control system. So it has sort of the, the generic concept of repository, um, general helpers like um, you know hashing and other sorts of support routines like that. Then you've got all your repositories. So you've got the Mercurial plugin. Uh, which will hopefully allow us to kind of contain that GPL code and make the rest of it uh, more easily, be able to be easily reused elsewhere. Uh, and then, of course, we're pushing forward on AMP Git, which has lots of interesting possibilities. Um, I'm kind of wondering if there might be uh, some room for diversification here, kind of having multiple backends. Um, you know, you could, for instance, try to do a command line wrapper around it, but uh, it turns out they actually tried this. And Git is just really inconsistent in how it prints out its reports and things, which makes it a real pain in the butt. Um, there's Grit, of course, which is an interesting possibility. They've got some Ruby code. They're still shelling out, but they're, they're doing a lot of the hard work for us. Um, what, AMP, what AMP had started working on in the sort of edge John Locke is, was a pure Ruby implementation. And also they want to have pure Ruby because then AMP runs everywhere Ruby runs. You don't have necessarily have the portability concerns like some of the earlier versions of Git had. And today I learned about a project called Ribbit, which is wrapping something called libgit2, which is sort of a library-oriented re-implementation of Git in C, so it'll still have full speed, and the Ribbit is a Ruby wrapper around that. So this will be a very interesting uh, avenue for us to poke at. And eh, for the review, I'm good. <coughs> All right. So in review, AMP is a familiar, customizable interface to every version control system. Uh, if you want to access mature repositories, you can install it now. Uh, and you've got command line and a uh, gem you can require and use in your code. <coughs> its goal is to be free from devotion to a single version control system, to allow you to use anyone and to allow everyone to use every repository, to allow you to pick how, you, how the interface you want to your repositories and to other repositories. To have, to have extensions that you can use any extension on any repository and write extensions that work on any repository. To have easily customized commands in, in the Ruby that you already know. <coughs> to prove that Ruby is viable for large scale applications. And to discover how to build uh, large scale applications in Ruby and to be an example of a well-run project with good documentation. <coughs> so AMP is a familiar, customizable interface to every version control repository. These are our goals. These are our tools. Now is the time, and you can help make it happen. So, um, I'm Justin Love. Michael Edgar's uh, right down there. Um, you can ask me any questions, and I'm sure if I can't answer them, he probably can. Uh, are there any questions? Um, John Locke was on Bitbucket. I think we're pretty much primarily on GitHub for uh, Redux, right? Right. Uh, the primaries are under uh, Michael Edgar is the title. Um, I mean, if, if you search for AMP, you'll probably turn up one of our repositories at least. Um, the, let's see, the structure is AMP Redux is going to be eventually become AMP. So you do you gem install AMP, and that'll pull down the rest of it, and that'll pull you know AMP, you know AMP front, AMP core, AMP Git, etc. As all the pieces. Uh, yeah, they're they're building a new server for that. Is that correct? Okay, so the, so the web page will be updated shortly. It, it still refers to uh, John Locke only at the moment, unfortunately. But that's coming. Anything else? All right, thank you very much. Thank you.